Your MagiCraft Rose checks all the boxes for a high-end handcrafted production spinning wheel. But did you include on your list the ability to spin enormous skeins of yarn? With the overdrive head, you can create huge skeins of yarn so you don't have to weave in the ends on a bigger project like a sweater or a big blanket. Or you can use it to spin really bulky yarns and not have to change bobbins every time you get into a groove. I'm Jennifer Johnson with Whispering Pines Farm. My husband and I raise a beautiful flock of soft Shetland sheep, and I'm also an authorized MagiCraft dealer. And I'm committed to hold inventory of the entire MagiCraft product line here on the farm in Western New York so that you, the hand spinner, don't have to wait to get the tools and equipment that you need to spin your dreams. I've included links to my website in the description below so you can click through if you need more information about the products that I talked about in this video. Before I go any further, I'd like to thank you so much for stopping by to watch this video. I hope you find it helpful. And you can help me by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons below this video. So let's get started with the overdrive head on the rose wheel. In this video, I'm going to install the overdrive head on the wheel, and then I'll spin a really bulky yarn from some roving I had made up from some of the rams in our flock. So let's get to it. There are three different overdrive head part numbers. So they've tailored each head to the specific wheel, whether it be the Rose, the Aura, or the Susie. So this is the Rose overdrive head assembly. And what comes with that, a bobbin band, it's a black band, and the knob to help to control your brake tension. Then you got your two whorls. There's your flyer whorl, and they both have the grub screw that you're gonna to use to install onto the flyer shaft and the, the brake whirl. You get one overdrive bobbin with your overdrive head and you can order bobbins separately if you need to get an additional one. There's also an overdrive Lazy Kate that can handle the large overdrive bobbins as uh, an option. Then you have your overdrive flyer and then finally, the overdrive head. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be removing the standard head and replacing it with the overdrive head. So that's what comes with your overdrive head. What you're gonna to need to have before you start your assembly is your four millimeter Allen wrench that came with your wheel, but you also need your two millimeter Allen wrench for the installation of the whorls and a Phillips head screwdriver. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is remove my drive band. And then I'm gonna take the standard head off of the wheel. And I'm gonna do that by removing the JCB bolt. Keep the spacer, make sure you don't lose it. It's a good idea to kind of have some support underneath your head in case it's real loose and you don't want it crashing into the wood. So you just take that right off and set that aside. So first thing I'm gonna do is put the overdrive head on. There's only one way to install the overdrive head. You're not able to take advantage of, you know, putting it on either side. It has to be set up so that this piece is, the opening is on the bottom and the hinge is on the top. And this, it's using gravity as a part of the adjustment. So that's why it has to be set up like this. So when we're looking at the head, as I'm facing the wheel as if I were gonna be spinning on it and the, the rose emblem is facing me, the shaft is gonna be coming out towards me. So we're gonna go ahead and just set that in there. Replace the JCB bolt and the spacer. And I, you know, I like to install them so that they're pretty much in the center of that gap between the this little stem support here and the spacer. All right, so now I'm gonna install the whorls. The first whorl we're gonna install is the bobbin whorl, which has two grooves. They have a black color on the inside of them. So the, the grub screw on the bobbin whorl lines up with a threaded insert that the grub screw will, will screw into. But you also need your two millimeter Allen wrench for the installation of the whorls, which is not included in your kit. You have to gra grab that from when you originally bought your wheel. All right, so I'm gonna line those two pieces up. Let me 
make sure my grub screw is fully inside, which it is. So line it up so that, and you can't use the shaft because it works independently, so it's a little bit tricky. So you line that up. And if it does not go, stop and realign it. But this seems like it's going in pretty well. So just go until that stops. Good hand height there. So that piece is done. And then you're going to install the flyer whirl. Now there's no flat on the shaft like there is on your standard whirl. So we're just going to slide it on, line up the last three grooves of the drive wheel with these grooves as best we can. And then just give her a tighten. And you want that good and tight. So they work independently. It's pretty cool. Now what we have to do is we have to install the brake band. And on the rows, you have to uninstall your con rods and slide the brake band on. So that's what you need your Phillips head screwdriver for. I always start put my pedals on the bottom so there's no interference with any of the other parts. Take that wood screw all the way out so you can slide out your con rods. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do these one at a time just so I don't get them mixed up. Make sure it's nice and straight. Sticking up maybe by about a millimeter. Put the brake band inside. Get your socket, ball and socket nicely aligned so they aren't banging into the crank assembly. This is the same way that you install your drive band. I'm applying a resistance against this as I'm doing because I don't want to, it just doesn't feel like I, I don't want to damage my hinges or anything. Okay, so your drive band goes on the outer three pulley and groove. So I'm on the second to the last right now. It's easier to do this. <laughs> okay. And then the bobbin band goes along the top and then it goes onto this little idler over here. installed on the smaller groove. Alrighty. And then you just take the knob, which is going to be how you control your tension of your brake, and thread that in. It's just pushing up against the head. So as you continue to turn it, this piece comes up 
or down. And that's how you apply tension to your brake band. Okay, the bobbin and the flyer are next, but I'm gonna put the wheel on the floor because it's easier for me to treadle the bobbin and the, the uh, flyer on from the floors. Okay, so now we're gonna install the overdrive bobbin onto the shaft. The shaft has got two pins similar to your Aura with the pinholes on the side of the bobbin. It's only on one side, so you can only load it one way. So line it up as best you can. And get those. Pinholes set up on there. And then thread on your flyer. Your overdrive flyer has got the 23 millimeter ceramic lined hook. It's very pretty and large. And then it has the open guide and the aura orifice with the open pigtail or the delta option. You can go with one or the other, depending on what you're doing. Usually the pigtail is for really bulky stuff and the delta is for finer stuff. All right, so that's the flyer loaded. So when I want to make adjustments to the bobbin, I use this knob here to slow down or speed up the bobbin. And the flyer is just gonna go at the same speed as the drive wheel. All right, let's just take some roving here. It's easy to load the overdrive bobbin because of the large size of the hook here and then the open guide. And I'm gonna use the delta along with the pigtail. I'm not sure how bulky I can do. So that's the overdrive head on the rose. You can see at home, you can just fill that up with tons of fiber or with a very bulky gauge of yarn. So it's pretty cool. Thanks for watching this video.